what is my true identity often we are known by the profession that we do by the place we come from the parents we belong to say i am a doctor i am a professor i am a politician i come from this particular town i belong to these parents all these are true but these are very worldly identities these identities do not remain forever the second reading from st john we are told who we are we are truly the children of god and that's what jesus christ came to the world for to make us truly god's own children jesus is the son of god and we are baptized into him and we become one with him since we become one with the lord we are children adopted children in the son of god and jesus reveals to us what he does for us as we are the children of god and jesus says i am the good shepherd what does the good shepherd do for us jesus says three things one i know my own my own know me my own that's what jesus speaks about us we are the very own of jesus the precious possession of the lord and jesus said i know my own god knows us god knows us every one of us personally and jesus said matthew chapter 10 verse 30 jesus said so clearly even a hair that falls from the head i have counted it all a hair falling down from the head so many of them fall to the bathing floor every day who cares to count a silly detail of our life even such a silly detail does not escape the attention of our god what does jesus want to tell us jesus wants to tell us how precious we are we so precious to the lord he counts even the hair that falls down to the floor even such a silly detail does not escape the attention of our god he knows it he cares for it and he loves us loves us as he is concerned about everything happening to us that gives us great confidence we are not anonymous entities for the politicians we are anonymous entities a politician will come especially during the time of election the politicians will come to our house and before entering the house they will decide how broad they should smile how much they should speak according to the number of votes in that house if there are five votes in that house the politician will say there are five votes in this house and therefore this house is precious and every one of us is looked at as a vote by the politician what we can do for him we will vote for him and bring him to power that's the way the world looks at us but god looks at us differently what he can do for us he knows us he cares for us even every detail of our life is there in his concern in his care and then he says i will lay down my life for the sake of my sheep that is a great revelation we just celebrated the paschal mysteries in the easter celebration how jesus laid down his life for us he said no one snatches my life away from me i willingly offer it 
for the salvation of my sheep. Jesus said once, there's no greater love than to lay down one's own life for the sake of the friends. That's how we are loved. I'm so loved that Jesus cares for my life more than for his own life. He lays down his life for me so that I may not be lost. That again gives us great confidence. My Jesus lays down his life for me. My dear sisters and brothers, again Jesus said, I go after the lost, wounded sheep. That's what Jesus does for us. Often we are wounded. Often we stray from our God. Often we don't care for him. Even when we do not care for him, he cares for us. Even when we run away from him, he runs after us in order to hold us close to him because Jesus knows we have no other identity, destiny, than being the children of God. Only in his possession have we any safety and security. Our Jesus, when we are wounded, he comes after us. A love like this is not seen anywhere in the world. This is the way God loves us, being our good shepherd. My dear sisters and brothers, the path of our life is strewn with a lot of hardships, challenges, and difficulties. Often we get anxious, we wonder how we can get over all these problems of our life. And today, the Lord is telling us, I am there for you. I am there for you, especially when things go wrong with us, a God is there for us. And therefore, St. Paul says, when God is there for me, who can be against me? A confidence. A confidence in our God. When my God is there for me, who can be against me? God will take up my battle. When there are problems in my life, he stands by my side. And he fights for me. He fights for me. My battle, he takes over and is there by my side. Let us take all that confidence of faith into our hearts. Because often, we slip into anxiety. We slip into fears, not knowing where to turn to. When troubles come our way, we have our God to turn to. We have our God to hold on to. You abide in me, Jesus said, and I will abide in you. Jesus, who abides in us, inviting us to abide in him. Our life on this earth becomes so beautiful when we hold on to him and we know that he holds on to us in an intimacy of love. And then Jesus said, I will come and take you to myself and forever you will be where I am. A life is bloomed in eternity. Death is not a threat for us. Death is a glorious passage to eternal life where we will be with the Lord and the Lord will be with us. Let us contemplate this great theme of the good shepherd. That's what a God is for us. And that's what a God does for us. Amen.